Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Evil University on the Dutch Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Gunshi The Art of Strategy, game designed by Satochika Daimon and published by Grandeur Games. Let's get to the table. Gunshi The Art of Strategy is a two player battle game set on the ancient Japanese battlefield. Players play as the generals, laying out their commands often several moves in advance while they direct the battle. The players will battle back and forth until one of two things happens. Either one player invades the other's territory with at least three pieces, or until one player captures the opponent's shogun, who will be picked at the start of the game. In this video, we'll be teaching you the rules for the second edition of Gunshi The Art of Strategy, but do note that we're using components from the first edition. We'll explain a couple of the differences in components as we go through the video. To set up the game, each player chooses a side, red or blue. Red will always play first. Each player will take the seven command cards in their color and will mark the number 18 on the logistics track with a cube. The 34 soldier pieces are placed next to the board, the infantry and their shields, the cavalry and the archers. Each has a red and a blue side and is represented by a unique letter. There are also four fences in each player color. Players will now go back and forth starting from the red player, recruiting units or buying fences and placing them on the battlefield. On your turn during setup, choose any one soldier piece, place it onto one of your colored spaces on your side of the battlefield and then pay that soldier's logistics cost. This is three logistics for an archer, four logistics for a cavalry, or two logistics for an infantry. When placing a piece, you flip it over to your colored side and you may orient it in whichever direction you wish with this arrow representing the direction it's currently facing. When placing an infantry, take one of the blank tokens and then place the infantry token on top of it. All of this costs you two logistics points. The other option on your turn during setup is to spend one logistics point to place one of your fences on the edge of any one of your squares. Players continue placing their soldiers and fences in this way until both players are out of logistics points. You are only allowed to keep logistics points past setup if you end up with fewer logistics points than the cheapest remaining piece. Next, each player secretly chooses which of the soldiers that they've placed on the board in setup will be their shogun. In the first edition of the game, you simply note its letter down on a sheet of paper, but in the second edition, you will take the shogun marker, which matches its letter, and then place it face down. You must protect your shogun at all costs. If it is ever captured, you will lose the game. Finally, each player may rearrange their seven card command deck into whichever order they wish before finally drawing a starting hand of three cards. You're now ready to play. Gunshi, the art of strategy, is played in turns, starting with the red player and going back and forward until one player has met a win condition. Each turn is played in four steps. First, units follow commands, which will be taking actions on the main board based on cards that were previously programmed, sending new commands, which will be programming new actions into your action queue, the lightning command, where you have the option to bring one of your commands forward, and finally resupply, where you'll draw back to three cards and gain some logistics points. After resupplying, play passes to your opponent. Now let's look at each step in more detail. First, units follow orders. You will skip this in your first turn of the game because you are yet to place any orders in your command row. But on all subsequent turns, you must resolve the action or actions in the first column of your command row. If you do have two cards in this row, then you must resolve the bottom action first and the top action second. Unless it is physically impossible to do so, you must resolve the action that you've placed, even if you don't want to. 
Think of it as the order having already gone out from the general, and not being able to be taken back even if things have changed on the battlefield. Then take the command card, place it on the bottom of your command card deck, and slide any other cards down to fill the spots. I'll talk about what the different actions are in the next section of the video. Next you will send new commands, which means to take a card or cards from your hand and add them to your command row. You must place at least one card per turn, and you may place as many as you wish up to a maximum limit of four cards in the row. As you will no doubt have noticed, I have alternated placing cards face down and face up, and this is the requirement of the game. It represents about half of your military strategy being leaked to your opponent by spies. This sequence repeats throughout the entire game. If the last card you place was face up, the next will be face down, and so on. The very first card you place in your first turn will be face down. The third step of your turn is to issue a lightning command. This is an optional step, and if you choose to do it, you must spend six logistics points, and then move the card in your second column on top of the card in your first column. Then slide your other cards down to fill the gap. As we saw before, when it comes to your next turn, you will then resolve both of these actions in the same turn, starting with the bottom one and finishing with the top one. This can be a tactically beneficial way of getting a surprise attack in on your opponent. Finally, you will finish with the resupply phase, where you will draw back up to three cards in hand, and you will gain some more logistics points based on the total number of columns that are filled in your grid. You gain as many logistics points as there are filled columns. So here, four cards with a lightning command will gain you three logistics points. As such, the further you plan ahead, the better your logistics will be, but the less flexibility you have to respond to what your opponents are doing. So you will need to balance this out. Play then passes to your opponent. So now that we understand the turn sequence, let's move to what the different actions in the game are. There are four different command cards in the game. Recruit reinforcements, build fences, move and attack, and rotate or shoot. Each player has three move and attack cards, and two rotate or shoot cards. The most straightforward of the actions is to recruit reinforcements, as this is more or less the same as what you did during setup. First, choose one new soldier, remembering that if you take an infantry, the soldier consists of two pieces. Then, place that piece anywhere in your home-coloured territory, facing in whichever orientation you wish. Then, pay its cost in logistics. Two for infantry, three for an archer, or four for cavalry. The second type of action is to build a fence. And while this is similar to how you built fences in setup, there are some more restrictions when taking it as an action during the game. The fences you place during the game must be built by an infantry soldier, and must be in one of these five locations relative to that soldier's current location and orientation. So, for example, this infantryman facing this direction could build here, 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 or here, but would not be allowed to build here. Similarly, this infantryman facing forward could build in one of these five spaces. This archer, on the other hand, could not build a fence, because only infantry may do so. The other restriction is that a fence may not be built on the edge of a square containing an opponent's soldier. So this infantry soldier could build a flanking fence, but could not build one in here. After building one fence in any legal location, the player must then spend the logistics cost of one. Each player has a total of four fence pieces in the game, and will get no benefit from this command card if they are all already on the map. Next we'll talk about the move and attack command, and this allows you to move one piece according to its legal movements. An infantry or an archer may move one step in any of the four orthogonal directions. After taking a move, the piece is always rotated so that it is orienting the direction it has just moved. 
a cavalry piece may move one step to either the left or the right, and once again must be oriented to face the direction that it just moved, or it may charge any number of spaces forward in its current forward direction. When doing this, it may leap over exactly one friendly archer or infantryman, but it may not leap an enemy unit or another cavalry. Cavalry may not move backwards compared with their current direction. One of the major uses for fences in the game is to impede an opponent's cavalry charge. Cavalry cannot move through an opponent's fence. They will stop short and then destroy the fence. And in fact, this is true for any type of unit which moves next to an enemy fence. As soon as a unit enters a square which is bordered by enemy fences, all of those enemy fences are destroyed and return to the supply to be built again later. A player's movements, whether cavalry or otherwise, is never impeded by their own colour of fence. When you move a soldier into a square containing an enemy soldier, that constitutes an attack. When you attack an archer, or when you attack a cavalryman, this removes that piece from the board, returning it to the supply. Infantry begin the game with two lives, represented by the second disc in the infantry stack. The first time an infantry is attacked by either another infantry or an archer, then, instead of removing the piece, simply remove the bottom disc from the board, reducing that infantry to one life. The next time it's attacked, it's removed from the board. However, cavalry hit harder, and if an infantry which still has two lives is attacked by an opponent's cavalry, then both lives are lost at once. The final action card is the Rotate or Shoot card, and this contains two distinct actions. To rotate one unit, or to shoot with one of your archers. To take the Rotate action, simply rotate any one of your units to face any other direction. You can turn 90 or 180 degrees in either direction. To take the Shoot action, you will shoot one arrow with one of your archers, attempting to hit an enemy soldier. The archer's range of attack depends on its current direction. An archer may shoot up to two spaces in its current forward direction, one space to the left or right, or one space diagonally forward to the left or right. So here, archer T, cavalry L and infantry J are all within range of archer U. Shooting an arrow in any direction other than forwards does not cause the archer to rotate. A piece that is hit by the arrow suffers one hit, meaning that for cavalry or an archer, the piece is removed from the board. For infantry, the first hit will remove a shield, and the second hit will remove the piece. Fences provide some protection from incoming enemy fire. When an archer is shooting directly ahead, then an enemy fence in the way will protect pieces behind it. So here, infantry F is protected from both Archer U and Archer T's arrows. When considering diagonal fire, the fence only protects the unit if it is running perpendicular to the direction of the arrow of the archer. So in this instance, Archer U is looking in this direction and the fence runs this direction, so infantry E is protected. However, this fence runs parallel to the direction that Archer T is looking, and so Archer T is able to shoot diagonally around and hit Infantry E. Remember that there can never be an enemy fence adjacent to an archer, so these are the only situations you need to know for whether a fence provides protection. Friendly fences do not block arrow fire, and so here Archer Q can still shoot at Cavalry P. In addition to these five basic commands, there is also one special and powerful modifier which can be applied to all of the commands except for reinforcements. This is called a chain command. The chain command allows you to perform the same action with several identical pieces on a single card. A chain command is performed as follows. For each command you issue, you will always be issuing it to a single unit on the field. However, you can then chain that command to any of the same type of unit which is orthogonally adjacent to the one you've issued the command to. So if you've issued your main command at infantry F, you can then apply the same command to infantry I 
and infantry C, even though it's pointing in a different direction. The command will not chain to infantry A, as it's diagonally adjacent, infantry E, because it's too far away, or archer W, because it's not an infantry. Then all of the units receiving the chain command must perform the same action. In the case of movement, this means all of the chain pieces must move in the same direction relative to the board, not to the direction the pieces are facing. So if infantry F moved here, infantry C would move here and rotate, and infantry I would move and attack here, but because this is still an infantry with two health, would be knocked back. This still counts as a chain attack because infantry I was taking a single move and attack forward. When chaining cavalry movements, once again they must move in the same direction relative to the board, but they may move different distances. For example, this cavalry could do a short charge, this one could do a long charge, and this one, because it's facing this way, could only do a sidestep and rotate. When chaining the rotate action, all of the chain pieces must end up facing in the same direction. And when chaining the shoot action, the archers may shoot in different directions. When chaining the fence action, each infantry could place a fence at a different orientation relative to itself. The full logistics cost for the chained action is one point per fence. The chain action is one of the most powerful actions in the game, allowing you to take multiple actions very quickly, and if you use it right, get the upper hand on your opponent. There are two ways to win a game of Gunshi Art of Strategy. The first is to invade your opponent's home territory by moving your pieces onto one of these five squares represented by the cross. Anytime you move a soldier onto one of these spaces, you have a choice. Either leave the piece there to continue moving and capturing your opponent's pieces in the vicinity, or invade. Remove the piece from the board and place it onto one of your opponent's invasion spaces. Once you've moved a total of three pieces into the invasion territory, you have successfully invaded your opponent's kingdom and won the game. You should also bear in mind that if an infantry that still has its shield invades, this will count as two pieces towards the invasion. So in this case, those two soldiers would be enough to get the three pieces to win the game on the invasion. Note also that your Shogun may never invade. If your Shogun reaches one of these pieces, then it must remain on the board, able to be captured by the opponent. The other main way to win the game is to capture the opponent's Shogun. If your Shogun is ever captured by the opponent, then you must reveal this and the game is over. You may also choose to end the game by surrendering at any time. The second edition of Gunshi Art of Strategy will introduce several new advanced command cards. In the standard advanced rules, you will gain access to one of these cards each time you invade the enemy territory. As a reward for invasion, you will get to discard one card from your hand and replace it with a card from the advanced supply. This gives extra strategic benefit to invading your opponent's territory. You can also choose to construct these cards into your seven card decks at the start of the game. The second edition also comes with a newly printed game board, which includes slots for your Shogun markers and a specific place in your command sequence for the lightning orders. And that's how to play Gunshi The Art of Strategy. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Gunshi The Art of Strategy is going to Kickstarter. So we'll put the link in the description below when it is live so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comments section below. See you in our next video. Bye!